You know, the, the president has once again reiterated his call for a reinstatement of the assault weapons ban. Um, you know, back in 2020, uh, you went viral. You posted this video after a similar plea. Take a watch. I have a message for Joe Biden and Beto O'Rourke. If you want to take everyone's AR-15 in America, why don't you swing by my office in Washington, D.C. and start with this one? Come and take it. Look, I, I come from a place where uh, all of my friends have guns, many of them use ARs. I guess my question is, is your concern as a, as a federal official, as a lawmaker, as somebody who legislates, that something like that maybe diminishes uh, the impact of what this moment is and kind of the conversations that's happening, uh, at least if you're trying to reach a resolution on issues? Well, if, if Joe Biden is interested in reaching a resolution on the issue, let him deal with the southern border. We have drugs coming across the southern border. And, and this crisis, this mental health crisis that we have in this country, um, has a, a direct relationship to our drug laws being loosened um, and the, the lack of funding at the state level for mental health services. So let Joe Biden deal with some of the issues that are underlying the, the, the very serious, and, and I have to tell you my heart goes out every time we have one of these uh, shootings to, to the victims and their families uh, of these shootings. But it doesn't, um, it doesn't lessen the burden that Joe Biden has in finding solutions to these problems other than just blaming the gun all the time for the problem that, that he, in part, is causing by his policies on the border. So even if I stipulate everything you said related to the president, what's the burden on you as a lawmaker in the wake of these? You noted every time one of these happens, your heart goes out, you feel awful. The fact that they happen so many times that you have to say every time, that would seem to be a pretty significant problem nationally. So what's the burden on you as a federal official, as a lawmaker, to do something about this, regardless of what you think it is, but to do something? Right. No, I, I absolutely acknowledge that. And, and my burden is to make sure I follow the Constitution and the Second Amendment protects. There are more than 2 million AR-15s. As you said, you have some friends with AR-15s. They're not a danger to anybody. The idea that we're going to confiscate 2 million weapons in this country is, is pure folly. The idea that we're going to ban a particular kind of weapon as if some other weapon won't be used. I, I can remember 20 years ago, uh, the ban was on handguns. We've got we've to gotta stop handguns from being used. And handguns kill far more people than a rifle like an AR-15. If you go to Chicago and you look at the murder rate in, in some very poor areas of Chicago, they're not using AR-15s, they're using handguns. So ultimately, we need to stop the violence by uh, making sure we take violent criminals off the streets and addressing the mental health issue that, that we face. That's my burden. This is Republican lawmaker Ken Buck getting called out for his own shameful behavior, effectively threatening Democrats with an AR-15 amid just the latest shooting in this country where the shooter, of course, employed the use of that same weapon. And look, I've been doing these videos for a few years now. I've watched people with their smooth segues to ultimately get to their talking points. I don't think I have ever seen such a shameless, clunky whataboutism as Ken Buck being asked about guns and his immediate response just to barrel into some non sequitur about the southern border. These people aren't even trying to make sense anymore. It's like Republican Mad Libs and they get paid by the buzzword. To be asked about gun violence in American schools and respond that this is the result of drugs coming in through the southern border is just so unbelievably tortured that George W. Bush would look at it and get nostalgic. Now, I don't know who needs to hear this, but no, sorry, drugs coming in through the southern border are not responsible for mass shootings in this country. Now, I get that it's convenient for someone like Ken Buck because at the end of the day, part of being a Republican official in this country is just to blindly blame everything on the southern border, wokeness, or critical race theory. But the notion that a school got shot up in Tennessee is the result of a completely unrelated issue 1,300 miles away is ludicrous. And the way that Ken Buck tries to thread this needle between drugs at the border and mass shootings is by saying this. And this crisis, this mental health crisis that we have in this country um, has a, a direct relationship to our drug laws being loosened. And in a way that makes sense because, well, how can you expect us to be in a mentally sound state of being knowing that the border is porous and so it should frankly be no surprise that, yeah, I'm sorry, I have no fucking clue what this guy is talking about. And let's be clear, when Republicans talk about mental health, they are using it to distract from the issue at hand. I want to make sure that I am not mincing words here. Republicans do not give a shit about mental health in this country. They're just pretending that they do because it's vague and nebulous enough that they can always point to it as the culprit, knowing full well that it'll never be solved. 
It's like the war on terror. Can you point to it as a justification to do whatever you want? Sure. Will you ever actually solve it? Not a chance. And that's great as far as they're concerned because they're not actually looking for solutions, they're looking for excuses and distractions. But just for fun, let's give Ken Buck the benefit of the doubt. Let's pretend for a moment that he really is the advocate for mental health awareness that he purports to be. Lucky for us, we've got a few votes on bills specifically dedicated to tackling the issue of mental health. Just this past summer, the House passed the Bipartisan Restoring Hope for Mental Health and Wellbeing Act of 2022 by a vote of 402 to 20. One of those few no votes? You guessed it, Ken Buck. What about this past fall when the House voted on the Mental Health Matters Act? Surely, surely Ken Buck voted for that one as the champion of mental health advocacy that he is. And look at that, another no vote. So when he pivots away from gun safety reforms by claiming that the real issue at hand is mental health, then why the fuck doesn't he vote for mental health? It's amazing too how this guy with a straight face can suggest that Joe Biden isn't interested in finding solutions to these problems. Just this month, Biden signed an executive order increasing the number of background checks conducted before firearm sales, increasing the effective use of red flag laws, strengthening efforts to hold the gun industry accountable, and accelerating law enforcement efforts to identify and apprehend shooters. Biden's literally done everything he could do without actual legislation, which is the job of Congress, where Ken Buck happens to serve. And in fact, Biden did sign the first gun safety reform legislation in three decades into law, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Shall we go back to the roll call and see how Ken Buck voted on that? What do you know? He voted against it. So if Ken Buck wants to whine about someone not doing enough, he should try a mirror. But of course, aside from pinning all of the blame to legislate on Joe Biden, who I should note is not a legislator, Ken Buck views his role in all of this as some protector of the Second Amendment. And of course he goes into the usual fear porn about gun confiscation, which no one is suggesting we do beyond the hysterics of the GOP's own straw man arguments. But here is one point that I'll make about the Second Amendment. It is not unlimited. It does not mean that you can buy any weapon you want with no restrictions whatsoever. And don't take it from me, take it from Antonin Scalia, arguably one of, if not the most conservative justices on the court in our lifetimes. In his Heller opinion, he wrote, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. Nothing in our opinion should be taken to cast doubt on longstanding prohibitions on the possession of firearms by felons and the mentally ill, or laws forbidding the carrying of firearms in sensitive places such as schools and government buildings, or laws imposing conditions and qualifications on the commercial sale of arms. So when Republicans today claim that any regulation is an infringement on your Second Amendment right, recognize just how extreme they've allowed themselves to become, all while mass shootings are surging in this country. And I'll finish with one last response to Ken Buck, who says this. So ultimately, we need to stop the violence by uh, making sure we take violent criminals off the streets. Oh, we just take the violent criminals off the streets. And so I guess the way we stop these shootings is just to jail the shooters before they shoot up the schools. Perfect. Let's just go ahead and grab our time machines and figure out who the shooters are going to be ahead of time, and then boom, we can all be safe. See? Who says we can't figure out solutions if we just put our heads together? And look, I could have kept going with a slew of other responses to quite literally every syllable that left Ken Buck's lips, but I think you get the idea. These are unserious people in an unserious party, and the fact that they obstinately refuse to act in the face of a relentless barrage of bloodshed when they have the ability to do something about it really is blood on their hands. If only those lives were worth as much to them as their gun lobby donations, we might actually be able to fix this. Before you go, a quick announcement. I've started a Spanish YouTube channel. Democrats desperately need to be able to appeal to Spanish-speaking audiences, so this is me doing my part. To help that channel get going in the algorithm so that we can finally start spreading our progressive message and breaking the conservative stranglehold on Spanish-speaking media, please subscribe and watch a few videos. The link to that channel, called Brian Teller Cohen Espanol, is right here on this screen. And of course, to see more of my content in English, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. The link is also right here on this screen. Thanks so much for watching.